one here. Hopefully I got some res. I got a little bit ups and downs, man. It's gonna be like that sometime. My bad I ain't catch y'all yesterday. We got a little bit of BS going on. Uh, all glory and honor and praise go to my Father in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet Holy Spirit don't know honor and praise and glory go to me. Gotta give it to who it's to. I'm just like y'all, man. Hey, I, I know got a lot of stuff going on, so I'm like, just like y'all, sometimes it's hard for me to get into the jump. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Sometimes it's hard for me. The best time I ever spent, I promise you. I don't know if people got what they do to keep them focused or whatever. Like, it ain't nothing I can't explain that uh, protect my heart and my mind like God's word. Uh, God bless uh Bless the pastors, man. I need someone to speak to me every now and then. Like, word, family and friends, everything they can tell you, like, ain't, you know, don't do no good. Like, word, quite often it might make you mad, for real, for real. Like, hope that scene ain't no hope at all. Sometimes I get I get caught up focusing on what I got, don't got, but I do know what I have, <laughs> word. I do know what I have for a fact. I got my father in heaven, I got Lord Jesus Christ, and I got the Holy Spirit. Can't no one take that away from me. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Word. I know it don't mean a whole lot on this side of the earth right now, but when it all said and done, and them, and them chips cash in the bank, when I close my eyes, it's going to mean everything. Just got to stay focused on that. Lord Jesus said, keep your mind sent in heaven, word. Getting caught down here thinking how the earth sometimes throw you off. Talking to myself, too. Word. Best time I ever spent in my life is time in God's words. So, like, Psalms 30 verse 5 say, uh, Weeping may last for a night, but joy come in the morning. <laughs> All right. It's going to be like that. Weeping may last for a night, but joy come in the morning. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't explain it, man. But I love God. I feel, I feel so different at each and every single time. <laughs> my great grandma used to sing a song for a long time ago. She said, I feel good. Good, good. I feel good deep down in my soul. Every time I think about Jesus, not sometimes. She said, every time I think about Jesus, not every time. She said, every time I think about Jesus, not a quarter of the time. But every time I think about him, I feel good. To tell you the truth, man. I get called up and like where? Looking around, what's going on and stuff, man. People, they're, they're, mirrors are a lot of company. I'm going to tell you that now. I don't care what's going on. I know. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I know God been taking care of me all my life. He's been taking care of me all my life since I was 17 years old. I've seen things happen for me. And I lose track. I need to keep remembering that sometimes. i seen God provide for me from a young man. I ain't never had to worry about anything. I'm telling you. I'm going to have my words and stuff like that. But I've seen the Lord take care of me. I know he'll do it again over and over again. I just got to keep doing what I'm doing and stay focused. Not worry about the rest of the stuff. Bless y'all who praying for me. Yeah, bless y'all who praying for me. All right. <clears throat> I like that. Sometimes we're going to complain, stuff, 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 stuff like that. Sometimes I don't even feel like talking all the time. Be honest, which, hey, the very first book I ever read was Jeremiah. Where Jeremiah had a complaint. His whole mission was to go speak to people. And God told him before he went to go speak, he said, hey, no one going to listen to you. I'd have been like, why you want me to go speak to these people then? But nevertheless, he ended up getting uh, going through some things because of the word of God. <laughs> Jeremiah complained to the Lord one day. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. Jeremiah said, you deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I'm ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is, is in my heart like a fire. <laughs> Even when I don't want to talk about it, I don't be feeling too pumped up to speak to people just like that all the time. But even when I don't want to speak, the brother said his word just like a fire in my heart. A fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side, denounce them, let's denounce them. All my friends uh, are waiting for me to slip. Perhaps you will be deceived, then we will prevail and take our revenge on them. Verse 11, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. Hallelujah. So my prosecutors will stumble and not prevail. 
They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their, their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the right, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart of mine, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Amen. All right. I love that. Jeremiah said, everyone waiting on me to slip this and that. Rouse my friends, say they're going to stumble. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. Amen. I got my ups, I got my dance. Hey, I don't know how things. Man. Keep my eyes on the Lord. Tell you what. Bless God. Going verse by verse. Let me pick up where I left off. <clears throat> Throw this out here. And throw this out here. I like this. Talking to myself. Psalms 37 verses 1 through 40. Say, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> I know that's the fact. Take the, take the light in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Can't nothing down here give stuff to me, provide for me. All right, everything I can do on my own ain't going to do nothing but send me to, this gra to, to the graveyard, to the truth. <clears throat> I can go to work. My hope and trust ain't in that job. I can get my bit, my hope and trust, and say, take the light in the Lord. He'll give you desires of your heart. I believe that with all my heart, too. I don't care what no one say. All right, y'all crazy. That's why I, the blind, the blind, uh, the blind can't lead the blind. Why I get, why I set my opinion to people who don't understand and give it word. I seen the Lord provide for me time and time over again. You just gotta keep being patient and do the word. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do this. He'll make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday. Verse seven say, verse seven say, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret. When, which means panic. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, which means panic. It only leads to evil. It does. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Amen. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. <laughs> the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But the sword will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Amen. Better the little have, better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. I love the little bit that I do, God. I ain't got to have, I, don't, I might not be the richest man this one. I, I never have cared about that. Never always been myself. I've been fine with just being who I am. I always have been. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of men. For the power of the wicked will be broken. But the Lord up, upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord bless will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of those of the one who delights in him. Though he may, though he may stumble, he will not fall. Yeah, I, 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 I scrape my knee every now and then. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. I know who holds my hands on his walk, on his walk, in his valley. <laughs> Brother David said, I was young, now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and land freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just, and he will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom. Their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie and wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. <clears throat> I have no fear of death. Hey, take me out this body to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. You'd be doing me a favor, be honest with you. <laughs> it don't get no worse for me down here, but for some, it don't get no better. Uh, but the Lord will not lead them in the power of the wicked or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree. 
But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright, a future await those who seek peace. But all sinners will be destroyed, but there will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Amen. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Amen. Might not have this, I might not have that. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this though. <laughs> I love this. Brother David said in Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I got pumped up so much last night, boy, when I flipped that page open. I already know it, but I'm going to tell you, I need to remind myself sometime. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. When I think and consider what I do have. Yeah. I don't care about that. The reality real. Reality will mess with you. I believe the Bible says my righteous ones will live by faith and not by sight. Yeah, reality is real. And sight will mess you up. Put my faith and trust in God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me, to, he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Whew. Yeah, my soul be going through it sometimes. I can feel it. David said he refreshes my soul. Yeah, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I like the King James where he say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life when I will dwell in the house of the Lord for forever. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm going back to where I left off. We enjoy, I'm trying to give y'all as much as I can while I can until I can't no more. <clears throat> Word up. I'm going to try to give y'all as much as I can while I can until I can't no more. And if y'all just tuning in, y'all go start from start from number one. Word, because it's going to be days coming where the people ain't going to be able to get a chance to get the word of God. The Lord said it in one of these verses. Like, it's going to be a drought coming. It's going to be a famine coming. Not for food or nothing like that, but for the word of God. People going to be wanting to hear it so bad. They're going to be searching for God, yearning for God, dying to hear God's word, and they ain't going to be able to get it. All right. Joshua chapter 6. God bless all y'all. I hope the Holy Spirit, anoint, uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, come on all y'all. Y'all keep praying for, I keep praying for y'all. Joshua chapter 6. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his king and his fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of rams, of, of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpets, had the whole army give a loud shout, then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. <clears throat> so Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carrying trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, advance, mount, march around the city uh, with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the, of the Lord. When Joshua, when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the, of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army, "Do not give war, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word, <laughs> until the day I tell you to shout." Then shout. Then he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned uh, to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except uh, that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army to shout, For the Lord has given you the city. 
the city and all that is in are to be devoted to the Lord. Only rehab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she had despised uh, we sent. But keep away from the devoted things <clears throat> so that you would not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel uh, liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his, his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the, ar the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, the men gave a loud shout. The wall collapsed, so, that, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed, destroyed with the sword. They, they devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword everything uh, in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go to the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young man went. Uh, <laughs> so the young man who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab and her father and mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They brought her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside of the, the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. But the but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. As she lives and she and she lives among the Israelites to this day. At that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Curse before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild this city Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundations. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame, his, his fame spread throughout the land. <coughs> Akon's sin. <coughs> At, Akon, yeah. Akon's, Akon's sin. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zer, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. And Joshua sent some men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, "Not all the army, uh, not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not worry the whole army, for only a few people live there." So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the by the men of Ai, who killed about thirty six of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarrels and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us to the hands of the Morites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that, the, that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and other people of the country will hear, will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, uh, Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possession. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted and is devoted to destruction. Go consecrate the people. How you do that, by the word of God? Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparations for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. They are devoted things among you. There are devoted things among you. Israel, you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. In the morning, present yourselves tribe by tribe. The tribe of the Lord, the tribe of the Lord chooses, shall come forward clan by clan. Uh, <clears throat> the clan of the Lord chooses shall come forward family by family, and the family of the Lord chooses shall come forward man by man. Whoever is caught with the devoted things shall be destroyed by fire, along with 
all that belongs to him. He has violated the covenant of the Lord and has done an outrageous thing in Israel. Early the next morning, Joshua had Israel come forward by tribes, and Judah was chosen. The clans of Judah came forward, and the Zerites were chosen. And he had the, the clan of the Zerites came forward by families, and Zimri was chosen. Joshua had <laughs> Joshua had his family come forward man by man, and Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was chosen. Then Joshua said to Achan, Achan, my son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from him. <laughs> the Lord singled these people out. <laughs> I can find out what you did. Ahab replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is, this is what I have done, what I saw in the plunder of a beautiful robe from Babylonia. 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent and brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all the Israelites, uh, with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver and the robe, the gold bar, his sons and daughters, his cattle, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent, and all that he had to the valley of, a of Acre. Joshua said, <clears throat> "Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring the Lord will bring trouble on you today." And then all uh, Israel stoned them, and after they had stoned, and after they had stoned. Them, then all Israel stoned them, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned They burned them. O over Achan, they leaped a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned his first anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Acre ever since <clears throat> Ai destroyed uh, Joshua chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Josh, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered them. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and his king as you did to Jericho and his king, except that you except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set in ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't. Go very far from it. All of you will be on alert, and I and all the uh, and I and all those with me will, will advance on the city. And when the men came out against us, they did as before. Hold on. And when the men come out against us as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city, for they will say they are running away from us as they did before. So, so when we flee from them, you are to rise up and from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give them to your hands when you have taken the city. Set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it. Uh, you have my orders. Then Joshua sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent the night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his army. He and the leaders of Israel marched uh, marched before them to Ai, the entire force that was with them marched up, marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up the camp north of Ai with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. So the soldiers took up their possess positions with the main camp of the north with the main camp to the north of the city and the ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men in the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arab. But he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all the Israel and all the Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled and they fled toward the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were lured and were lured away to the, from the city. Not a man remained. And not a man remained in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in and, and they left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, "Hold out toward Ai the javelin that is in your hand, for until your hand I will deliver the city." So Joshua held out. 
So Joshua held out toward the city, the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set fire on it <clears throat> and quickly set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up into the sky, but they had no chance to escape in any direction. The Israelites who had been fleeing toward the wilderness had turned back against their pursuers. For when Joshua and all the Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke was going up from it, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in the ambush also came out of the city against them. So they were caught in the middle with, with the Israelites on both sides. <laughs> they ain't playing. Israel cut them down. <laughs> Leaving them no survivors, no for, no, no no refugees. <laughs> yeah. No survivors, no refugees. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Ezra had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in all the, and in the wilderness where they had chased them, uh, when Ezra had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness where they had chased them. And when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. 12,000 men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back the hand that was held out of his javelin until he, until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did not carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder to the, of the city. As the Lord had instructed Joshua, but Israel did. Oh, but Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder of the city, as the Lord had instructed Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. He impaled the body of the king of Ai on a pole and left it there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take the body from the pole and throw it down at the entrance of the city gate. And they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains uh, to this day. The covenant renewed at Mount Ebal. All right, good morning, night. I see. So then, then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. As Moses. The servant of the Lord had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool had been used. On it, on it they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrifice and fell and, and burnt offerings and, sac and sacrifice fellowship offerings. There. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses. All the Israelites with their elders, officials, and judges were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing the, the Levitical priests who carried off who carried it. Both of the foreigners living among them and the nations and the native born were there. Half of the people stood in the front of Mount Jezreel, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formerly commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it was written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the foreigners who lived among them. Uh, Joshua 9, the Jibbeite, the Jibbeite deception. <coughs> Now, when all the kings west of the Jordan heard about these things, the kings. Uh, now, when all the kings west of the Jordan heard about these things, the kings in the hill country, in the western foothills, and along the entire coast of the Mediterranean Sea, as far as Lebanon, the kings of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Justabites, they came together to wage war against Joshua and Ezra. However. <clears throat> When the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done at Jericho and Ai, they uh, they resorted to a ruse. Hmm. Oh, all right. Hmm. However, when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done at Jericho and Ai, they resorted to a ruse. They went as a delegation whose donkeys were loaded with worn out sacks and old wine skins, cracked and mended. They put on, they put worn and patched sandals on their feet and wore old clothes. All the bread of their food supplied was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp at Jigal and said to him and the Israelites, We have come from a distant country. Make a treaty with us 
the Israelites said to the head to the Hivites, uh, the Israelites said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us, so how can we make a treaty with you? Hmm. The Israelites said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us, so how can we make a treaty with you? We are your servants, they said to Joshua. But Joshua asked, <clears throat> who are you and where do you come from? They answered, the servants have come from a very distant country because of the fame of the Lord your God. For we have heard reports of him, all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Morites east of the Jordan, Shine, king of Hishabron, and O.G., king of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtoreth. And our elders and all those living in the country said to us, take provisions for your journey and go and meet them and say to them, we are your servants, make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we packed it at home on the day we left to come to you. But now see how dry and moldy it is. And these wine skins that we filled were new. But see how cracked they are and our clothes and sandals are worn out by the very long journey. The Israelites sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Then the Israelites sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live. And the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. <clears throat> Three days after they made the treaty with the Jebenites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So the Israelites set out on the third day and came to their cities. Jebenian, Kiperf, Ki 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 Borf, and Kiref. Jerem, but the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. The whole assembly grumbled against the leaders, but all the leaders answered, We have given them our oath by the Lord, the God of Israel, and we cannot touch them. This is what we would do to them. We would let them live so that God's wrath would not fall on us by breaking the oath we swore to them. Oh, yeah, they, they lied to these people. The title is Egyptian yeah, Deception. I, mean. <laughs> I was wondering why they were doing this, but they did, they did try to trick them. <clears throat> All right, they continue. Uh, this is what we would do to them. We, we would let them live so that God's wrath would not fall on us by breaking the oath we swore to them. They continue, let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers in the service of the whole assembly. So the leaders promised them, so the leaders promised to, to them was kept. Then Joshua summoned the Jibbeites, the Jibboniites, whatever, and said, why did, why did you deceive us by saying we live a long way from you while actually you live near us? You are now under a curse. You will never be released from service as woodcutters and water carriers from the house of my God. They answered Joshua, your servants were clearly told how the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you the whole land and to wipe out all this inhabitants from before you. So we feared, so we feared for our lives because of you. And that is why we did this. We are now in your hands. Do to us whatever seems good and right to you. So Joshua saved them from the Israelites, and they did not kill them. That day he made the Jibbenites woodcutters and water carriers for the assembly to provide for the needs of the altar of the Lord at the place the Lord would choose. And that is what, and that is what they are to this day. I see why they lied. <laughs> they lied to say they lied. I probably... Well, the Lord says he's going to wipe them all out. It ain't a bad idea. Lying is lying. <laughs> it ain't a bad idea. I'm just saying. They was going to be gone either way, bro. <laughs> Joshua chapter 10. The sun stands still. Now, Adoni, Zedek, King of Jerusalem heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king. Um, <clears throat> and that the people of Jebinian had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Jebinian was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai and all its men were good fighters. So Adoni... Zedek, Adoni Zedek, Zedek, king of Jerusalem, applied, uh, appealed to Hoam, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jermuth, Jeff, 
Japhia, king of Lashes, and Deburra, king of Aglon. Come up and help me attack Jibion, he said, because it because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. <clears throat> then the five kings of the Morites and the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all the troops and took their positions against Jibion and attacked him. The Jibonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp of Jigal, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, because the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with, with his entire army, including the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to, to be not one of them will be able to withstand you. After all, after all, after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Jibion. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Azekah, uh, Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, uh, the Lord heard the Lord the Lord hurled heart, uh, the Lord hurled large hailstones down from uh, on them and moved and more of them died from the hell that was killed by the, and more of them died from the hell than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On that day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of, of Israel, Sun, stand still over Jebion, and you moon over the valley of Agilion. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Joshua. The sun stopped in the middle. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human to a human being. Surely, said so the sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all of Israel to the camp at Gilgal. <coughs> five Amorite kings killed. Now the five... Oh, excuse me. God bless you, Lord. Now the five uh, kings had fled... <coughs> Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave at Makeda. When Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave at Makeda, he said, Roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But, but don't stop. Pursue your enemies. Attack them from the rear and don't let them reach their cities. For the Lord your God has given them into your hands. So <laughs> Joshua ain't joking. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely. But a few surviving men... Uh, but a few survivors managed to reach their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp of Makeda, Makeda, and no one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave. The kings of Jerusalem, he, uh, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, when they had brought out these kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army, the commanders who had come with them, Come here and put your feet on the neck of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord would do to all the enemies you are going to fight. <laughs> then Joshua put the kings to death and exposed their bodies and exposed their bodies on five poles and they were left hanging on the poles till evening at sunset joshua gave the orders and took them down from the poles and threw them into the cave where they had been hiding at the mouth of the cave at the mouth of the cave they placed large rocks which are there to this day seven cities conquered <coughs> that day joshua took makia he put the city and his kings to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it he left no survivors <laughs> He did, his, he, did, he, he did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all of Israel with them moved on from Makeda to Lebanon and attacked it. 
The Lord also gave that city and its kings into Israel's hand. The city and everyone in it, Joshua put to the sword. He left no survivors there, and he did to the king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all the then, then Joshua and all the Israel with him moved, excuse, moved on from Lebanon to Lachish. He took up positions against it and attacked it. The Lord gave Lachish to, into Israel's hands, and Joshua took it on the second day. The city and everyone in it he put to the sword, just as he had done to Lebanon. Meanwhile, Horam, king of Jazar, had come up to help Lachish, but Joshua defeated him and his army until no survivors were left. <clears throat> Joshua taking out everybody. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Lachish to Eglon. They took up positions against it and attacked it. They captured it that same day and put it into the and put to the sword and, and, to, and totally destroyed everyone in it, just as they had, they had done to Lachish. Then Joshua and all Israel with him went up from uh, Eglon to Hebron and attacked it. They took the city and put it to the sword, together with its kings, its villages, and everyone in it. They left no survivors, just as Eglon, they totally destroyed it and everyone in it. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned around and attacked the bird. They took the city, its kings, its villages, and put to the sword everyone in it. They totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They did uh, they did to Debir and its kings as they had done to Lebanon and its kings to and to Hebron. So Joshua subdued the whole region, <laughs> including the hill country, the Negev. Joshua, I would like to be rolling with this, but I'm just saying. Uh, western foothills and the mountain slopes together with their with all their kings he left no survivors he totally destroyed all he totally destroyed all who breathed just as the lord the god of israel had commanded god gave me the orders is, is being carried out to the teeth <laughs> joshua subdued them from kadesh benar <clears throat> benaria joshua subdued them from kadesh barnaria barnia to, to god's and from the whole region of Goshen to Gibeon, all these kings in their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign. <laughs> yeah, I like Joshua. I can see this dude now. But because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. The northern, uh, Joshua 11, northern kings defeated. <laughs> I like Joshua. I'm like, I like to roll with this dude. <laughs> Word up. When Jabin, when Jabin, King Azur, heard of this, he sent word to Jabab, King of Madan, to the kings of Shamron and Akshaf, Akshaf, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains and in the Arabia, south of Kanarif. In the western foothills and in the Nepal door on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and the west, and to the Morites, Hittites, the Perizzites, the Justabites in the hill country, and to the Hivites below the Hermon in the region of Mispath. They came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge army, as numerous as the sand of the seashore. All the kings joined forces and made camp together and at the waters of Maram to fight against Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, because by this time tomorrow I will hand all of them. <laughs> Do not be afraid of them, because by this time tomorrow I will hand all of them to slain over to Israel. You ought to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and the whole army came uh, against them. So Joshua and his whole army came against them suddenly at the waters of Miram uh, and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel. They defeated them and pursued them all the way to Greater Sidon, to Misripoth, Miam, and to the valley of Mispath on the east until no survivors were left. Joshua did to them as the Lord had directed. He hamstringed their horses and burned their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned back and captured Azor and put its king to the sword. Azor had been the head of all the kingdom of these kingdoms. <clears throat> Everyone in it they put to the sword. They totally destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. And he burned Azor itself. Joshua took all these royal cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any, any of the cities built on their mounds, except Hazor, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carried off 
uh, for themselves, all the plunder and livestock of these cities, but all the people, they put them to the sword until they completely destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. As the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it, amen. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took this entire land, the hill country, all the Negev, Negev, the whole region of Goshen, the western foothills, the Arab, the and the mountains of Israel with their foothills from Mount uh, Halak, which rises towards Seir, to Baal Gad in the valley of Laban, below Mount Hebron. He captured all their kings and put them to death. Joshua waged war against all these kings for a long time. Joshua ain't joke. <laughs> Except for the Hivites living in Jibion, not on not one city made a treaty with peace with the Israelites <clears throat> uh, who took them in battle, who took them all in battle. For it was the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel so that he might destroy them totally. It's extermin exterminating them oh yeah, ex exterminating them without mercy as the Lord had commanded Moses. At that time, Joshua went and destroyed the Ani the Aknites the Aknites from the hill country, from Hebron, the Bur, and Abnab from all the hill country of Judah and from the hill country of Israel. Joshua totally destroyed them in their towns. No Aniites were left in the hill in the Israelite territory. Only in Gaza, Gath, and Ash Ashdod uh, did any survive. So Joshua took the entire land just as the Lord direct, had directed Moses and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the Lord had, then the land had rest from war. The list of defeated kings these are the lists, uh, these are the kings of the land whom the Israelites had defeated and whose territory they took over the east of Jordan from the Ark Nine Gorge to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Abrif, uh, Abrif. Shahan, king of the Morites, who reigned in Hershbron, he ruled from Ario, uh, Ari, Ari, on the rim of the Arnon Gorge from the middle of the gorge to the Jabrut River, which is the border of the Amorites. This included half of the half of Jilad. He also ruled over the eastern Abrif, uh, Abrif from the Sea of Galilee to the Sea of uh, Abrif, that is the Dead Sea, to Beth Jessimoth, and then Sour below the soaps of Pishgah. And the territory of OG, king of Bashan, one of the last of the Raphaelites who reigned in Ashtaroth and Adri. He ruled over Mount Hermon, Sat Salikif, and all the Bashan uh, to the border of the people of Gershon and Maka, and half of Gilad to the border of Shan, king of Hershabron. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered him, and Moses, the and Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and have a tribe of Manasseh to be their possession. Here is a list of the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered on the west side of the Jordan, from Baal, Gad, and the valley of Lebanon to Mount Horat, which rises towards Sur. Joshua gave their lands as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel, according to their tribal divisions. The land included the hill country, the western foothills, the Arif, the mountain slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev. These were the lands of the Hittites, the Morites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jesuites. These were the kings. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Agai, near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jeru, one. The king of Lashkish, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Geshur, one. The king of Debir, one. The king of Jitter, one. The king of Hamor, one. The king of Arab, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adullam, one. The king of Malkita, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapur, one. The king of Hepur, one. The king of Aflac, one. The king of Lashon, one. The king of Madon, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Shemar, Maron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Tanik, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kadesh, one. The king of Joknim and Carmel, uh, Car Carmel, one. The king of Dor and No Fourth Dor, one. The king of Joyam and Jigal, one. The king of Tarzir, one. Thirty-one kings and all, <clears throat> land still to be taken. Joshua thirteen. The land still, when Joshua had grown up, 
sure he was a little bit tired too. Hmm? Man. He just been fighting all his life, bro. When Joshua had grown up, the Lord said to him, You are now very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. This is the land that remains all the regions of the Philistines and the Gershonites from the shore river of the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron to the north of all its countries, uh, of all it, uh, of all it counted as Canaanite. Uh, I gotta read that. From the shore river on the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north. All of it counted as Canaanite, though held by the five Philistine rulers of Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. The territory of the Avites on the north, on the south. <clears throat> All the land of the Canaanites from Aref, or the Sidonite, or the Sidonians, as far as the Aphek and the border of the Amorites, the area of Bablos, and all the, the and all Lebanon to the east from Bel Gad below Mount Hermon to Lebo Hermat. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Mis Misrepoth Mis Mis Misrepoth Misrepoth Malin, whatever that word is, y'all excuse me. There's a lot of weird words. I can't. I, I know I'm missing a lot of them, but it's all good. I know what I'm reading. That is, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for inheritance, as I instructed you, as I instructed you, and divided it as an inheritance among the nine tribes to the head and half of the tribe of Manasseh. Division of the land east of the Jordan. <coughs> the other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadites had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, had assigned it to them. It extended from Aeor, the rim of the Argon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, included the whole plateau of Medeba, as far as Deb Debian, and all the towns of Shahan, king of the Morites, who ruled the Hirshbron, out of the board of the Mor of Amor Amorites, it also uh, of the Ammonites. It also included Jalad, the territory of all the people of Geshur and Makia, all of Mount Hebron and all of Bashan as far as Sakia, that is the whole kingdom of OG and Bashan who had reigned in the Ashtaroth and, and Eldrin. He was the last of the Raphonites. Moses had defeated them and taken over their land, but the Israelites did not drive out the people of Gershon and Makia, so they continued to live among the Israelites to this day. But to the tribe of Levi, he gave no inheritance since the food offerings presented to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance as he promised them. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben, according to his clans. The territory from Arior, or the rim of, Aragon, of Arnon Gorge, and from the town of the middle of the gorge, and the whole plateau past the... Uh, and the whole plateau past Medeba to Hirshbron, and all his towns of the plateau, including Dibion, Bavmuth, Bel, Beth, Bel, Mion, Jahaz, Kedemoth, Mas, Mephoth, Kiliathim, Sibma, Zeref, Shahir, on the king of the valley, Beth Pure, the slopes, and, the slopes of Pishkah, and Beth Jemoth, all the towns of the Plateau and the entire realm of Shan, king of the Amorites, who ruled at Heshbron. Moses had defeated him and the Midianite chief, uh, Evi, Rekam, Zor, Hor, and Reuben, princess alive with Shion, with Shion, who lived in that country. In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam, son of Beur, who practices divination. The boundary of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Reubenites, according to their tribes. This is what the Lord, this is what Moses, uh, this is what Moses had given to the tribe of Gad, according to its clans. The territory of Jazer, <clears throat> all the towns of Jalad, and the half and half of the uh, Morite country as far as Aor near Rabbath and from Heshbron to Ramath, Mish Mishra, and Batani, and from Mahanan to the territory of Debir, Debir and in the valley of Beth 
Haran, Beth, Namran, Sukloth, and Zephron, with the rest of the realm of Shan, king of the Hishbron, the east side of Jor, the territory up to the end of the sea of Galilee. The towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Gadites, according to their clans. This is a. Uh, the territory, this is what Moses had given to the tribe of Manasseh, that is, the half of the families of the descendants of Manasseh, according to its clans. The territory extended from Mahanaram and including all of Bashan, the entire realm of OG, king of Bashan, all of the settlements of Jer and Bashan, 60 towns, half of Gilead uh, and Ashtoreth and Eldry. The, the royal cities of OG and Bashan. This was this was for the descendants of Makir, son of Manasseh, for half of the sons of Makir, according to their clans. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab, across the Jordan, east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he promised them. Amen. Knock out 14. I like 14. The vision of the land west of uh, the Jordan. <clears throat> now these are the areas of the now these are the areas the the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Judah allotted to them. There's the their inheritance were assigned by Lot to the nine and a half tribes, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. Moses had granted the two and a half tribes their inheritance east of the Jordan, but he had not granted the Levites an inheritance among the rest. For jo for Joseph the sinners he had for Joseph the sinners had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites received no share of the land, but only two towns to live in, with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites divided the land just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Jehogal, and Caleb, son of Jonathan the Kenite, said to him, <laughs> Caleb, I like this. You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me out from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went out with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I have followed the Lord, my God, wholeheartedly. So on that so on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that your children and and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord, my God, wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive 45 years. It's been 45 years since God made this promise to, to Caleb. Caleb said, God told me something 45 years ago. After one year, somebody would have gave up. Two years, somebody would have gave up. Three, four, five years, somebody would have gave up. Ten years, I, I know I ain't thinking about you no more. God, 20 years, God, you can't be concerned about me. 30 years, I, God, I know it's not going to never happen. 40 years, it can't never happen. It was 45 years. Caleb was still holding on to God's word. Listen to him. Numbers, uh, Joshua 14, verse 10. Caleb said, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So I'm here today. I'm 85 years old, and I'm still strong today as, as the day Moses sent me out. <laughs> I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Mo uh, Caleb said, I'm still ready. Now then, give me this country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anaks were, were there and that their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I dried them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jonathan, I, I, and gave him Hebron and his inheritance. So, so Hebron was belonged to Caleb, son of Jonathan, the Kizite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kareth. Abar, after Abar, who was the greatest man among the Anakites, then the land had rest for more. God promised Caleb something 45 years ago. Caleb said, I ain't forgot what you told me. <laughs> Caleb said, I ain't forget what you told me. And Caleb stepped to Josh. Yo, you remember what the Lord said? You know what the Lord said through Moses about me and his land? I was 40 years old. It's been 45 years. I still got my strength. I'm ready for it then. I'm ready for it now. Now give it to him. He said, Joshua blessed him. 
45 years holding on to God's word. You still kept your strength too? Look around. Everyone else dropped down like flies. Look around. I love that. Take God at his word. I'm speaking to myself too. God bless y'all. Y'all keep praying for me. I keep praying for y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow, Lord's will. Amen.